Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be taking a look at KDE Plasma Mobile on the Juno tablet. So let's get started. Now I do want to thank Juno Computers for sending this tablet over to me for review. And I do have that video up on the top left over here and a link down in the description below. And he also provided the ISO for me to install KDE Plasma Mobile. So I'll leave that link as well. I'm gonna go through the installation process real quick and also the review of the desktop. So let's begin. All right, I am using Ventoy to boot up and the screen orientation is actually this way right now. Don't know how to say it, but it's gonna reverse again. So kind of all scrambled up. Now I did get this ISO from Juno tablets or Juno computers. So it does have actual settings in there after you install, will fix all the touchscreen and the rotation. But for now, everything is kind of like backwards. You see how the rotation is now this way where I could see the text going down, but the touchscreen is actually still backwards where it was like when I booted up, it was that orientation. So there are a few things that are happening at this point where it's very hard to install without a keyboard or a mouse. First thing you need to do is pop in from his ISO. And since it's kind of like backwards, I need to pull down to pull this up. And then I have a keyboard just so I could, you know, type it in instead of trying to figure out where to press. The password initially is one, two, three, four. And yes, that does that too. The mouse cuts in and out uh, through this installation process. Now, this is the normal desktop you would generally see on any Manjaro or KDE or uh, installs. So, I'm just gonna go through the motion of installing this like I would on any desktop. But again, once this gets installed and rebooted, all the settings get uh, pulled from the settings from Juno tablets or Juno computers. And it will have all the rotation settings and the mobile version installed. So I'm just gonna go through the motions. It's real quick, it's a couple of minutes. I wanna erase the whole disk and I'm gonna put it as hibernation because it does work with this. And then here you're just gonna set up your username. So I'll just do done, done. I'll call this Juno tab. And I wonder if that works, it does. Uh, I'm gonna use the password one, two, three, four. Install, install now. And that is it. Give it about five minutes, maybe even less. And it'll just finish the entire process, reboot, and then you'll see everything as it should. All right, so this is a fresh install of the operating system. Um, the pin that I set up was one, two, three, four, just to make it easier. And that's how it looks. It actually is very intuitive at first and it's very easy to slide around. I do really like the operating system and the way it looks. Now, what I do like is that you could actually change the different themes to a dark mode, which is almost necessity at this point when you're having this bright of a screen. So I'm gonna go into settings and obviously everything works right now, but as soon as I reboot it, things starts to fail. Uh, I've witnessed that problem a few times and I end up having to format this a few times just to get it back to this setting menu to show you guys. So you have your audio that you could choose your headphones or your speakers. You have auto start that you can actually change applications to start up at times. Bluetooth, cellular network if you use this on a phone or something with cellular. Here's what I'm interested in, which is colors and themes. We're on this theme right now, but I could just change to breeze dark. And when you change this, it also changes the wallpaper, which makes it look really cool. I really like the dark mode. It even changes everything on top, all the buttons, themes, everything gets changed to that color. I'm gonna turn on caffeine so the screen doesn't go to sleep. And then going back into there, you have also display configurations, energy consumption, if you wanna dim your screen, and it, uh, fonts, hotspot. If you have cellular network, you can turn this into a hotspot. Icons, if you want to change the themes to the icons, which I'll keep on Breeze theme, which is exactly the same as the Breeze dark theme. Information for software, you know, we're using Manjaro. This is the KDE Plasma version 5.26.4. Kernel is 5. Point, um, where is it? Uh, kernel is 6.1 and uh, KDE framework is 5.101. Uh, this is using the N5100 and eight gigs of RAM. So you got your on-screen keyboard that you could change stuff out of. I do like the on-screen keyboard on this. Plasma styles, which is, uh, if you want to individually change the look of certain things, you could use this as well. Screen locking, shell, and then time and date. Now I am gonna do this automatically because it doesn't automatically do it. And then this is where you would type your, your password, which is your PIN number. And there you go. I mean, once I get internet, it should synchronize the time. Last but not least, my Wi-Fi settings. So I'm gonna hook this up to the internet and there we are, connected. It's actually really quick. 
So now with the internet connected, you could actually go into your Discover, and in here, you'll be able to load everything that you need or download whatever you want uh, moving forward. So um, just to show you guys what I'm talking about, Firefox does run into an issue. Like I can't click on anything, and I don't know if this is a known problem just for this tablet or the operating system in general, but here we have Firefox open, and if I go into uh, Nova Spirit, let's just Google that. I now have, I can't scroll. You see this? Scrolling does not work. Clicking does not work. So Firefox is donezo, like it doesn't even work, which leads me to try to download another um, browser, which I would use is Chrome. So you can use the Flatpak version or the regular version. Um, I don't know which one to choose is best, so I'm just gonna choose the regular version. And in here, you have this little icon when it's done, if you need to download it or install it, it should change to install and it's not appearing right now. I'm doing this live right now, and this is a fresh install, just to show you if there are any issues. Like this is a little bit of an issue. It comes back to like half screen, not full screen. Uh, let's go back to search and go for Chrome. Let's see if this happens with the flat pack version. And I'm gonna do this one, flat pack. And you have this, so let's do that. Now, because if we're using Flatpak, we might want to install Flat Seal as well because that's another really good manager for permissions on Flatpaks. It is taking some time to download. Usually Flatpak does this sometimes. So I'm going to skip to continuing with the desktop while that's loading. But yes, you have standard applications here. And if you choose an application that is not supported by this type of tablet, like VLC Media Player, you will see that it's going to be just a little screen like that. I mean, you can still full screen on everything, but that's how it will look like if the application does not support uh, tablet mode. Going into looking at other applications, you could go to this bottom left button over here, and you could actually scroll through the apps that you have open, much like an Android phone, and you could swipe up to close out all the app, close the application, or you can close out all the applications. The terminal that they have pre-installed on here is pretty nifty. Um, it is made for tablets. So when you have this open, you do have your buttons over here. You have a button just for the keyboard. And when you're typing, let's see, pack, it'll do exactly like that, just like if you were on a keyboard. So I do like this and you could save the commands just so you don't have to retype it. And that terminal is pretty good for this. Okay, it seemed that Chromium might have installed because my icon shifted. So let's go back, see it, it is here. I'm gonna go back to discover. And right now it seems like I could run it. So let's give that a try. All right, there we go. Doesn't seem to be full screen, but you can full screen it like that. And let's go to, uh, where's my keyboard? Now I have to do that. Hey, it's right here. My website, my GitHub, let's go to my YouTube. Close the keyboard. At least this can scroll and click and everything works. And it works right away. I don't know if you guys can hear it right now, but it is playing audio from here. This is my Linux Mint video. Everything works with Chromium. Firefox is the only one with the issue. And if you guys haven't seen it yet, I did do my off-grid solar setup, which was a lot of fun. And I do have a lot of upgrades from your comments. I'm already purchasing stuff that I'm reading off the comments to make it a better setup. Uh, I really enjoyed the Windows 11 phone. Um, the Pi KVM is, I'm gonna make more videos on this as well, but yeah. Browser works perfectly fine. And if you wanted to, you can install games. Let's install reverse and GNOME has a reverse. This is from the regular installer. And it seems like it is not appearing for the regular installer. Uh, anything that was flat pack, it seems to allow me to install, but for regular installation, it's missing that icon, which is a little bit weird. Let me go to see if everything's up to date. Is there any way to like run this? Let's go back into settings. Go back out of here. Let's go into software updates. Update software manual. Kind of weird. It's not loading what I need to. Reverse. Mm, oh, whoa. What is this? Space Cadet Pinball? Oh my God, this is the one from Windows 95 or Windows 98. I don't remember which year, but let's see if this would install. Again, Flatpak does take a while, but this is Space Cadet. Come on, man. While that's happening, another full screen application like Calculator, 
Um, that's very natural. Again, this works really good if it was in a phone setting, like it's it's an actual phone versus a tablet setting, I believe. I do still really like the theming, how uh, intuitive it is, how easy it is to move around. I got my menus up on top if I want to brighten and lower the screen. This is very familiar to me if you're used to using Android. So I do like it. Um, only downside is, like I said, it's still buggy. So there's still a lot of stuff that doesn't work with it or tries to make it work, but it's still buggy. Oh, Space Cadet is, is installed. I do also like their new uh, file manager, which is called Index. Well, the file manager that they have installed here called Index. And this looks very easy to use. You can see all your folders here. Ventoya is uh, mounted because I have my USB over here. Scrolling works. If I want to go to downloads, it's pretty quick. I have all my menus down on the bottom as well. So for a tablet slash phone, I like this index program. So let's check out Space Cadet Pinball. I hear it. It doesn't seem to work. I really hear it in the background. But... It's not loading the actual game. Oh, that kind of sucks. Let me see if I can go back into it. Yeah, it closes when I close that. I hear it now. And there's no way for me to close it because I don't see it anywhere. Settings, Terminal, Firefox, Chromium. Yeah, I don't see it. It's running in the background somehow. Now, next up, let's see if we could use this webcam. So I'm gonna go back and look for a program called Cheese. And what's funny is that if you're not familiar with using any Linux products, or anything with Linux, you're not gonna be familiar with what applications you're gonna to need to get. And Cheese is like one of those things where you wouldn't even think of the application name to use for a webcam, but that's the program itself. All right, there we go. I can't even download this. Like there's no button here. If it's flat pack, it allows me, but regularly it doesn't. I'm not gonna to try to figure it out, but I've been having issues with this back and forth. It's just not stable. So my thoughts about this is that it is a pretty good operating system if it's more polished and it does work for more devices. Uh, I think it's more geared towards phones versus tablets. It is very intuitive to use, but again, the bugs are killing me. Like I can't get half the things to work and I can't get certain applications to install, which is a huge red flag for me right now. I wouldn't be switching my phone to using this at all because of all these issues. Again, it could be the tablet's fault compared up with this operating system but this is an x86 device i'm not trying to install this on an arm device and it might be different where if the platform that you're installing it in fully supports that device i know that this uh, plasma mobile does work for the oneplus 6 and the oneplus 6t which is the phone that i use to install windows 11 and if i install this operating system over to there maybe i have a better experience but for now I wouldn't be switching it over to a tablet. Anyway, that is it with me. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.